स्टार्ट हाँ ओके वेलकम बैक गाइस टुडे विल बी डीलिंग विद द थर्ड पार्ट इन द लंग पैथोलॉजी ऑलरेडी we have done with the major topics the obstructive lung diseases and the restrictive lung diseases sarcoidosis pneumoconiosis emphysema asthma bronchiectasis chronic bronchitis all these things are already done in the first two videos okay in the first two parts we have already completed the important topics now in this last class on this lung pathology we'll be mainly uh, discussing the uh, miscellaneous topics okay the miscellaneous topics sir. okay which are also important for the exam so this class is going to be a short class not a long class it's going to be a short class we'll be completing most probably within an hour or 1 hour 15 minutes most probably so without any further late now let's begin the class okay see this is the normal epithelium this is the normal lung uh, not epithelium this is how the lung is going to look under the microscopy you can see this air spaces right the image based question which was asked so all these are the air spaces okay all these are the air spaces okay you can appreciate all these are the air spaces okay now here also you can very clearly see these are the alveolus the alveolus is lined by two types of cells type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes the, these are the basic things now the important point which you should know for your exam is the type 2 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes are going to produce which substance surfactant surfactant now what is the function of the surfactant the function of the surfactant is to decrease surface tension is to decrease surface tension the surfactant is going to decrease the surface tension surfactant other important points it's made up of it's made up of lipids as well as proteins but lipids are 90% 90% lipids surfactant is a 90% lipid okay major major majority is lipids okay 90% it is lipid and that to the major lipids are called as dipalmethyl phosphatidyl choline uh, like uh, which is also called as a lecithin so those are the physiology things which i don't want to go now into those details simple surfactant is produced by type 2 pneumocytes surfactant decreases the surface tension surfactant is 90% lipid okay these are the basic things which i want you to know after this uh, some other important points see the respiratory system the conducting uh, airways okay see the entire respiratory tree is divided into two zones the entire respiratory tree is divided into two zones the entire respiratory tree is divided into two zones that is conducting zone as well as um, respiratory zone so some important points conducting zone and respiratory zone now what is the difference between this conducting zone and respiratory zone the conducting zone means the part which is not involved in gases exchange it only helps in the transport of the gases okay see in conducting zone there is no gaseous exchange no gases exchange but in respiratory zone there is gases exchange so next question is sir what are included under respiratory zone so what exactly are the parts of respiratory zone so respiratory zone it includes respiratory bronchioles alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs okay respiratory bronchioles okay let me write here clearly respiratory bronchioles respiratory bronchioles alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs see these are the parts of respiratory zone so in this areas see they go in this areas gases exchange is going to occur yes gases exchange occurs in this areas okay but here there is no gases exchange in conducting zone there is no gases exchange so that's why this conducting zone is also called as what it's also called as dead space dead space now the questions which i want you to know in this uh, histology and like in this pathology the questions which i want you to know wait in conducting zone what is the lining epithelium what is the lining epithelium that is present in the conducting zone is it simple squamous epithelium stratified epithelium columnar epithelium cuboidal epithelium what kind of epithelium it is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay pseudo stratified ciliated columnar 
okay pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium in this conducting zone the conducting zone which is also called as a dead space see the next important question which they will ask in your exam is what is the volume of this conducting zone how much volume okay starting from trachea to the terminal bronchioles conducting zone is from trachea to terminal bronchioles see this part from the trachea to the terminal bronchioles this first part is called as a conducting zone what is the volume of this conducting zone it is 150 ml so this 150 ml is your dead space where there is no exchange of gases simply the in and out gases will go through that area but there is no exchange of gases which is 150 ml starting from trachea to terminal bronchioles see the lining epithelium is okay pseudo stratified ciliated column epithelium but in the conducting zone there are okay in the conducting zone there are two stem cells present that stem cells okay there are two cells which are, which will act like a stem cell what are they clara cell and basal cell See, this clara cell and basal cell they are considered as stem cells okay done good now let's talk about the respiratory zone sir respiratory zone it is lined by which epithelium yes there is gas exchange okay for better gases exchange which type of epithelium is better suited thin epithelium or thick epithelium it should be very thin it should be very thin lining should be there okay so the respiratory zone is lined by simple squamous epithelium okay simple squamous epithelium right now what is the what is the stem cell see even in respiratory zone there is a stem cell what is the stem cell that is present in the respiratory zone the stem cell in the respiratory zone is called as type 2 pneumocyte type 2 pneumo Site, type 2 pneumocyte we have discussed right the one which produces the surfactant it's that one so type 2 pneumocytes are the ones which produces the surfactant okay done what else sir what else you should know see the questions which are asked in the previous exams are ocal cords ocal cords we have the ocal cords right in the larynx and that's what the that's what produces the sounds see, these ocal cords are lined by which kind of epithelium which type of epithelium is lining the ocal cords it is stratified squamous epithelium okay. the stratified squamous epithelium Done. next after this let's begin with the congenital anomalies okay let's begin with the congenital anomalies now what are the congenital anomalies that you know okay just think what are the congenital anomalies that one can have from birth an extra lobe an extra lobe of lung see this is called as bronchopulmonary sequestration okay so what is bronchopulmonary sequestration see it's a rare birth defect okay it's a rare defect in which an abnormal mass an abnormal mass of non functioning it's not functional okay it's an abnormal mass of a non functioning lung tissue okay so it's a rare birth defect where an abnormal mass of non-functional lung tissue is present okay non-functional lung tissue is developed prenatally okay non-functional lung tissue is developed prenatally Now the question which was asked is, see there is this extra lobe of lung, okay simple, for example you can look here, see there is this extra lobe, Deco. there is this extra lobe sir, extra lung tissue which is non-functioning, it's just there, it's just there, it can be within the lungs like this intralobar, it can be within the lungs, okay, or it can be outside the lungs, so how many types of bronchopulmonary sequestration is there, Are it, just look, bronchopulmonary sequestration, it, it sounds more complicated, Simple bronchopulmonary sequestration is nothing but there is a presence of extra lobe of lung, simple extra lobe of lung tissue which is non-functional. It can be there within the lungs that is called as intralobar. It can be there outside the lungs that is called as extra lobar or extra thoracic. Okay. So it can be intralobar or it can be extra lobar. Okay. 
So how many types are there? Two types. Intra low bar or extra low bar. Okay. The question which was asked is, okay, there is this lung tissue present. From where it will get its blood supply? So this mass receives the blood supply from directly iota, from the branch of iota. Okay. Let me write here. Receives the blood. See, here also, they could, I have found it uh, in the internet, but very important. See, blood supply from the iota is fed directly into the sequestration. Directly it is getting the blood supply from the iota. Okay, so what is pulmonary sequestration, bronchopulmonary sequestration? Simple, it is abnormal lung tissue that is present at the birth. That lung tissue, the air is not going over there. So usually it is going to be filled with what, like you know, the fluid. Okay, so it's a fluid filled cyst. Okay, usually the fluid is going to get filled over there. So cystic, it's just going to be looking like a, um, a tissue with a lot of fluid in it. Okay, so two types, intrapulmonary, extrapulmonary. Okay, intrapulmonary is more common than sir. If you know this much, enough. Simple extra lung tissue that is bronchopulmonary sequestration receives the blood directly from the iota. Okay, now after this, I will show you an image. You just try to answer it what it is. Okay, now look at here and tell me what is happening. So, here the lung is absolutely normal. What happened to this side lung? What happened to the lung that is present on this side? collapsing the lung is collapsed the lung is collapsed and even on the x-ray on one side sir okay it's the lung is looking normal the air is there so it's coming black but on the other side where is the lung the lung is collapsed totally lung is collapsed now there is no air in the lung so that's why no blackness so this condition is called as atelectasis atelectasis now what you should know regarding the atelectasis how many types of atelectasis are there there are three types of atelectasis sir Okay, there are three types. One is called as a contraction atelectasis because of repeated injury, 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 fibrosis, injury, fibrosis, injury, fibrosis. So because of the scarring, excessive scarring, the lung tissue became smaller. Now no longer the lung tissue can be opened. No longer the lung tissue is going to show the compliance. Now because of some repeated, repeated injury, now lung become fibrotic. So now it's totally, you cannot open it. So air is not going out to that area. So it is contraction, contraction atelectasis. You can see here the scarring. It's because of the scarring. Okay. Even look here. The atelectasis of three types. See, lung scarring will lead to contraction atelectasis. Contraction atelectasis. Okay. So this is the normal size of the lung, but the lung got smaller. Okay, that is contraction atelectasis. Now, second type of atelectasis is see, there is some trauma that have happened. Okay, there is some kind of trauma, some kind of trauma to the lungs. Now, what is that causing? See, it's causing this hematoma over here. Okay, now the fluid is getting accumulated or some blood is getting accumulated. Now, what this fluid is going to do? It is going to compress the lung tissue. It is going to compress the lung parenchyma. So, the lung parenchyma is going to be compressed. The lung tissue is getting compressed. So, do you think in that particular area, alveoli are going to open? No. So, lung is collapsed in that area. So, this kind of atelectasis is called as a compression atelectasis, okay, because of some blood, okay. Here also look, see, some blood, air or some fluid is going to cause a compression. So, that is compressive atelectasis. One is scarring atelectasis, other one is compression atelectasis. And the third type of atelectasis that I want you to know is, there is some block over here, sir. Okay, there is some obstruction, there is some obstruction. As there is obstruction, okay, now because of this obstruction, the lungs are designed in such a way, now whenever there is obstruction here and that's what is causing the collapse, air is not going, so lung tissue collapsed. So, this is called as resorption atelectasis, okay, resorption atelectasis, here also they go, guys, here there is airflow obstruction, there is some obstruction, because of this obstruction, there is atelectasis, so it is also called as obstruction atelectasis or resorption atelectasis you can call anything okay so what i want you to know is there are three types of atelectasis okay compression contraction and resorption compression contraction and resorption three types of atelectasis which are there okay now i will show you three images you just try to find out sir this type of atelectasis can you tell me 
So, the first one, second one. See, in first one, is there is any hematoma? There is no hematoma, sir. Is there is any block? There is no block, sir. So, this is contraction atelectasis. In second one, they go, there is some obstruction over here. If there is obstruction, that is going to cause a resorption atelectasis. Next, if there is a hematoma, that is going to cause compression atelectasis. So, three types of atelectasis. Okay, image-based questions, if they ask, you can you should be able to answer. Three types of atelectasis. Atelectasis means collapse of the lung. The reason why I am putting this topic here is radiology. Okay, in your exam, this is the image-based question that is going to come. Lung is not there. The to to total lung is collapsed. So, you cannot see any air. Okay, any air. So, there is no blackness. Okay. Next, after this, the next topic which I want to discuss here is ARDS. Okay, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So, what exactly is this acute respiratory distress syndrome, sir? So, this acute respiratory distress syndrome is also called as, okay, acute respiratory distress syndrome is also called as hyaline membrane disease. So, acute means suddenly, okay, suddenly, okay, there is respiratory distress, acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is also called as hyaline membrane disease. Why it is called as hyaline membrane disease? Because in the alveoli, okay, if you take a biopsy, if you take a biopsy, in the alveoli, look, in the alveoli, there is a deposition of pink color material. There is deposition of the pink color material. Image-based question, I will show you, which is very important for your exam. There is deposition of pink color proteinaceous material or hyaline-like material is seen in the lungs. Okay, I will show you. So, that's why hyaline membrane disease. Now, other, other things, other terms. See, it is in this condition, what is happening, sir? There is a diffuse alveolar damage. There is a diffuse, diffuse, not in just one single lobe or like no, no, one, one single place. A diffuse alveolar damage is seen. Now, let's write one by one important points which you should know, or, or, like points which you should know for your exams. So, rapid onset. Okay, this is rapid in onset. See, acute, right? So, right, rapid onset. Why it is rapid in onset? I will explain you. What are the causes? I will explain you. Rapid onset of widespread inflammation. Rapid onset of widespread inflammation. Because of some reason, the reason I will tell you, because of something, there is widespread inflammation that is going to start in the lungs. Okay, widespread inflammation in lungs. Okay, why? All this we will discuss. Sir, I used to remember... Um, ARDS, like something like this, A-R-D-S, ARDS. See, what is this A stands for? Okay, acute respiratory distress syndrome, okay, but mnemonic. A is for abnormal chest x-ray. If you take a chest x-ray, I will show you how it looks like. Abnormal chest x-ray. Now, what you will find in chest x-ray? Sir, in both the lungs, not in one lung, in both the lungs, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, means patchy, 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 white kind of, okay, bilateral pulmonary infiltrate. So, the pulmonary edema will occur. Okay, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. R for, is not going to be a chronic disease, not something like that. Acute in onset, rapid, rapid onset, rapid onset. So, what is D, sir? D stands for here, decrease. Decrease PaO2. The partial pressure of oxygen is going to go down. Okay, the partial pressure of oxygen will go down. And what is this S stands for? The S stands for all the, sim the symptoms are not due to the heart failure. See, let me tell you something. Imagine there is a person, sir, who is having a heart failure. If the person is having heart failure, that will cause back pressures. That will cause pulmonary edema. Whenever there is a pulmonary edema, definitely there will be dyspnea, all these things. So, usually, whenever there is a heart related problem that's definitely going to cause the lung symptoms okay the pulmonary symptoms but now in this condition there is no problem with the heart heart is absolutely absolutely normal so symptoms is for symptoms are not due to heart failure okay are not due to fluid overload Okay, it's not due to fluid overload or it's not due to heart failure. Okay. Now, what are the clinical features? Sir? If there is a person who is having, okay, there is this person who is having acute respiratory distress syndrome. What are the clinical features that he is going to have? See, the patient usually going to have dyspnea. Okay, dyspnea is going to be there. 
basic thing, right? If the person is having some lung related problem, definitely dyspnea is going to be there. He is going to breathe faster, tachypnea. A difficult dyspnea means difficulty in breathing. Tachypnea means fast breathing. Okay, tachypnea is going to be there. I have said you, these patients are going to have decrease oxygenation, sir. decrease PaO2. FiO2 will also go down. Okay, so these patients are going to have um, cyanosis. Okay, these patients are going to have cyanosis and hypoxemia. These are the clinical features, but you are still having a doubt, sir. Why? Why this problem? Acute respiratory distress syndrome. There is widespread inflammation in the lungs. Because of some reason, there is widespread inflammation in the lungs. So, that widespread inflammation is going to, that widespread inflammation is going to cause the damage, the da damage to the, uh, the lining cells in the alveoli. Okay, we will discuss one by one. That I will discuss now here, one by one. Step by step, I will discuss. Okay, so what are the steps that are going to happen? See, they go at the end of the day. What happens is, see this endothelial cells, this endothelial cells, they are damaged and this alveolar like lining, the pneumocytes, the pneumocytes are also damaged. So, because of this, see the fluid is entering into the lungs. This is normal lung, this is normal lung. But on the other side, what I am showing, the fluid is getting built up in the lung. So, that is going to cause edema, okay, that is going to cause edema, sir. So, what exactly is happening, discuss one by one, okay. Now, See, there are certain conditions which will cause widespread inflammation in the lungs. What are these conditions, sir? Sepsis. Okay, sepsis or aspiration, trauma. Aspiration or trauma. Pancreatitis. Which means, yes, if a patient is having pancreatitis, he can develop the ARDS. If a patient is having trauma, aspiration, uh, uh, septicemia or pneumonia. Okay. So, these are all the triggers, the first number one point. Okay. So, what these are going to do? What these things are going to do? So, all these things, whatever I have mentioned here, in this conditions, what happens is the first cell that is going to get activate is a macrophage. There is activation of the macrophages. Okay. The macrophages are activated. Now, these activated macrophages, will they sit calmly, something like that? No. Will they, are, are they going to be calm now? No. The activated macrophages are going to produce the cytokines like interleukin 1, uh, interleukin 6, interleukin 8, tumor, tumor necrosis factor alpha. So, these activated macrophages, what they will do? They will produce interleukin 1, 6, 8, ENF, alpha, okay, and um, transforming growth factor beta. See, all these are going to be produced by the activated macrophages, activated macrophages. First macrophages are activated. Now, these macrophages, what they will do? Macrophages, they produce these chemicals. Now, they are the ones which are going to cause the neutrophil recruitment. Now, they will cause the neutrophil recruitment. Okay. So, neutrophilic means they will attract the neutrophils. Neutrophilic recruitment. Okay, neutrophilic recruitment. Now these neutrophils, whatever have came, okay, now these neutrophils, they will do, they will do more damage, sir. Actually, they will do more damage. So what they are going to do? See, these neutrophils, they will produce reactive oxygen species. I will show in the images also the same steps. Reactive oxygen species, they will produce. And they also produces the proteases. Okay, they also will start to produce the proteases. Now, because of this, macrophages and neutrophils, because so, see, there is sepsis in the body. Now, the sepsis activate macrophages. Macrophages activate neutrophils. Neutrophils produce unnecessarily proteases and they produce the reactive oxygen species. Now, because of this, now for the first time, the pulmonary capillaries, they go. Now, this endothelial cells, okay, now this endothelial cells, are going to get damaged. The endothelial injury will occur, okay, because of this reactive oxygen species. Now, what happens? Let me write here. See, there is endothelial damage. Okay, there is going to be endothelial damage. 
are again say the alveolar capillary membrane especially in the alveolus okay alveolar capillary membrane damage okay alveolar capillary membrane damage can occur now whenever the capillary membrane okay whenever it is damaged Anyway, there is endothelial damage or alveolar capillary membrane damage. Now, whenever there is endothelial damage, now what happens? Now, the endothelium is damaged. You know the lining cell side, the endothelium is damaged. Now, when the endothelium is damaged, what happens? Now, the fibrin, fibrin, sir, it's a clotting protein, the fibrin. Now, this fibrin, it will start to enter. Now, the fibrin, it is entering into the, okay, now the fibrin, it is entering into the alveolus, okay. Entry of fibrin, deposition, fibrin deposition in alveolus. So now because of the damage to the endothelial lining, now the fluid will start to enter into the alveolus. Now in the alveolus, now this fibrin is getting deposited in the alveolus. So as the fibrin is getting deposited in the alveolus, now tell me, a pink color here look. So these are the air spaces. Now this is the air space, alveolus. Now are you able to appreciate this pink color material? Okay, are you able to appreciate all this pink color material? Here you can see it very well. See, so this is the air space, alveolus. Okay. Now are you able to appreciate this pink color material over here? Yes. And there is also lots and lots of inflammatory cells are there. Inflammatory cells are there. Blood is there. Blood cells. Inflammatory cells are there. So now in the lung, there is a leakage of fluid and that fluid contains fibrin. Now this fibrin is getting deposited in the alveoli. So that fibrin deposition is the one which is causing hyaline membrane. So in your exam, what they will ask you is this image based question. See, they go, this is all, this is the fibrin. Okay, this is the hyaline membrane. Now, because of this deposition of abnormal thing in the alveolus, now it's like a paint. Now it's getting coated like a paint. Now, because of this abnormal thing, protein, do you think prop, proper gas exchange will occur? Like, this is what this hyaline membrane will do. It will prevent oxygen exchange. It will prevent the oxygen exchange. Even if you give the oxygen, the mask, okay, even if you are giving the breathing mask, still the oxygen saturation will not improve. Even after putting the normal mask, the oxygen saturation will not improve. Because there is a deposition of this hyaline membrane, which is preventing the oxygen exchange. So, it prevents the oxygen exchange. So, what happens? There is going to be persistent MCQ. There is going to be persistent. Okay, persistent hypoxia. Okay, there is going to be persistent hypoxia, sir. Okay. Now, what are the points which I want you to know? Simple. There is sepsis. Or say, for example, pneumonia, let's put it this way. There is pneumonia, sir, infection in the lung. There is some infection in the lung. Or there is some trauma to the lungs. Or there is some aspiration into the lung, aspiration into the lung. Okay. Now, what happens? First, in the lung, they go, they go. In the lung, who is getting activated? Macrophages are getting activated. First, that's what I have explained, you see. Sepsis, aspiration, trauma, pancreatitis, pneumonia. First, what is getting activated? Macrophages are getting activated. Now, these macrophages, what they will produce? Interleukin 1, 6, tuber necrosis factor and tuber necrosis factor alpha and transforming growth factor beta. See, these macrophages, what they are producing? They go, these are the chemicals. These are the cytokines that are getting produced. Now, because of these chemicals, what I have said to you? Now, the neutrophils will be attracted. The neutrophils will be attracted towards the lung. Now, these neutrophils, they go. See, these substances are the ones which are causing Neutrophil recruitment, neutrophils are coming. During the way they are coming, while the way they are coming, the neutrophils produces the ROS, reactive oxygen species, okay, free radicals, proteases. Now, they will cause a damage to the linings, all these linings, okay, alveolar lining and the blood vessel lining will be damaged. That causes the leakage of the protein-rich fluid into the alveoli. So, fibrin is going to be deposited. That fibrin is now going to be called as hyaline membrane, okay, hyaline membrane. Okay, so now what else, sir? What else are the important points? Why? See, in this uh, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, in acute respiratory distress syndrome, even the alveoli will become collapsed, sir. Alveolus will become collapsed. 
why if you ask me why see the fluid is coming into the lung right yes sir the fluid is coming into the lung now let me write here okay same fluid into alveolus now what this fluid is going to do so this fluid will wash away the surfactant okay wash away surfactant so the surfactant is getting washed away so when the surfactant is washed away okay when the surfactant is washed away what happened to the surface tension surface tension increases So in the lung, surface tension increases. This is the basic physiology. Surfactant is preventing the surface tension. When surfactant is washed away because of this fluid, surface tension increases. So that causes alveolar collapse. So that causes alveolar collapse. Okay, simple, as simple as that. But what I want you to know is, sir, image-based question. This is the image. Okay, image-based question. Simple recap. Some problem in the lung. Okay. Sepsis, pancreatitis, trauma, aspiration, pneumonia, something is there in the body that activates the macrophages in the lung. Okay, the macrophages, the local macrophages in the lung. Macrophages produce the cytokines, recruit the neutrophils. Neutrophils cause damage. Neutrophils pro by producing the reactive oxygen species and by producing proteases will cause endothelial damage and alveolar lining damage that causes the pulmonary edema, deposition of fibrin, hyaline membrane disease. Okay, so with this, hyaline membrane disease is also completed. Okay, hyaline membrane disease is also completed. Remember the hyaline membrane disease, it should not be associated with the heart failure. No, it's not because of heart failure. Okay, because of heart failure, that's a totally different thing. That's a congestive heart failure that can cause pulmonary edema, that's okay. But in this condition, acute respiratory distress syndrome, there is no heart failure. Okay, now what you will be having, see, the fluid is getting accumulated in the lungs, right? So if you look at the x-ray, okay, if you look at the x-ray, you can see these bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, all these whitish, whitish areas. Okay. So, all the white, white areas are where the lung is getting collapsed. Okay. And also fluid accumulation, all this white color area. Okay. The alveolar are getting collapsed and filled with the fluid. Yeah. So, now after this, what else you should know? The last topic which I want you to know here is pneumonia, sir. The last topic which I want you to know in this lung pathology is pneumonia. How many types of pneumonia do you know? First of all, what is pneumonia? Pneumonia is infection to the lung. Infection of lungs. Infection of the lungs is called as pneumonia. Sir. Simple. Infection of the lung is called as pneumonia. How many types of pneumonia do you know? Two types of pneumonia are there. Mainly, broadly classified into. That is typical typical atypical typical pneumonia and atypical pneumonia so what is the difference between typical pneumonia and atypical atypical pneumonia this is very very important so look here the typical pneumonia it's mainly because of the infection is because of the bacteria okay bacteria and what is the most common bacteria pneumococci okay pneumococcus streptococcus pneumoniae streptococcus pneumonia is the most common cause of typical pneumonia typical pneumonia apart from that hemophilus staph klebsiella these are also the bacteria. These are also the bacteria that can cause bacterial pneumonia. That's a typical pneumonia. Okay, pneumonia infection because of bacteria is called as a typical pneumonia. Then what the hell is atypical pneumonia, sir? Atypical is not because of the bacteria. It's because of some virus or for some fungus, something like that. Okay, so non-bacterial in origin. So like mycoplasma, mycoplasma, chlamydia, adenovirus. Okay, so mycoplasma. Usually it's not because of the bacteria, but mycoplasma is exception. Okay, mycoplasma. Okay, so mycoplasma pneumonia, very very important. Lots and lots of times this question has been asked. Mycoplasma is going to cause atypical pneumonia. Atypical pneumonia because difference is there between typical and atypical. There is a little difference that is seen. Okay, so what are the differences between typical and atypical pneumonia? Okay, so before uh, telling you that, just what you should know. Typical pneumonia is because of bacteria. Atypical pneumonia is because of non-bacterial in origin. Non-bacterial, generally you will say non-bacterial in origin. But what is mycoplasma? What is chlamydia? These are also bacteria, no? Okay, generally speaking. They are also bacteria, but they cause atypical type of pneumonia. Okay, what is atypical, sir? What is that different, sir? I will explain you. I will explain you. Okay, now, two important MCQs. What is the most common cause of typical pneumonia? 
हिमोकोकोकस निमोनिया वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ एटिपिकल निमोनिया माइकोप्लाज्मा ओके माइकोप्लाज्मा निमोनिया ना इन टिपिकल निमोनिया लेट मी राइट हियर इन टिपिकल निमोनिया सी देर विल बी एक्सुडेट राइट ओके देर विल बी एक्सुडेट नाउ डू यू नो वेयर द एक्सुडेट इज गोइंग टू बी मैच दिस इज द आलवियोलस इफ दिस इज द आलवियोलस लुक द एक्सुडेट इज गोइंग टू बी हियर intra alveolar exudates see because of the infection because of the infection and inflammation see the fluid accumulation it's going to be here sir okay there is going to be fluid accumulation here where the fluid is getting accumulated within the alveolus so there are intra alveolar intra alveolar exudates okay intra alveolar exudates but in atypical pneumonia do you know it's not the alveoli that's getting affected okay in typical pneumonia alveoli are affected intra alveolar exudate is going to be there but in atypical pneumonia look for example now let me show you something like this for better understanding so imagine this is one alveolus second third now where is the infection and where is the inflammation where is the fluid accumulation see now everything is getting accumulated in between the alveoli so intra alveolar exudates are there no not intra alveolar exudates okay it is inter alveolar in between the alveoli okay or extra alveolar you can simply say okay so extra alveolar region is going to be affected so in typical pneumonia first important mcq which i want you to know is intra alveolar exudates are seen because of this intra alveolar exudates okay because of this intra alveolar exudates if a patient is coughing imagine there is a person who is having typical pneumonia now imagine this person when he is coughing there is like this exudate this fluid accumulation okay because of the inflammation this fluid accumulation is present where it is present in the alveoli now will it come out or not yes it will come out it can come out so the patient is going to have productive cough the patient is going to have productive cough but in atypical pneumonia is it intra alveolar exudates no there are extra alveolar extra alveolar exudates so is there going to be productive cough no dry cough so definitely dry cough sir it's not productive cough it's a dry cough if a virus is causing pneumonia it's called as atypical pneumonia now covid covid is example of what covid is example of atypical pneumonia covid is a virus it's causing infection to the lung so it's it's an example of atypical pneumonia so in atypical pneumonia if, if a patient is having covid he's going to have dry cough yes not the productive cough it's a dry cough the patient is coughing but sputum is not coming it's a dry cough okay so this is the point which i want you to know okay extra alveolar exudates are seen in atypical pneumonia now after this uh, one more important point okay look here look here points which i want you to know is see productive cough it is seen in typical pneumonia dry cough is seen in atypical um, dry cough is seen in atypical pneumonia sir after this what else i should teach you what is the most common cause of atypical pneumonia mycoplasma so this mycoplasma pneumonia patients see pneumonia is a serious condition but if a patient is get, having this atypical pneumonia especially mycoplasma pneumonia the severity is going to be much more less the patient is simple like you know walking normally just like you and me so that's why the mycoplasma pneumonia let me write here important mcq the mycoplasma pneumonia is also called as walking pneumonia because in other conditions pneumonia there is intra alveolar exudates the patient is totally bedridden okay it's very hard for the person to breathe the oxygen saturation is going down severe condition but if a patient is having mycoplasma pneumonia it typical So usually the patient is normally walking, doing normal regular work. He is coming to the hospital just by himself. Not a big deal. So mycoplasma pneumonia is also called as walking pneumonia. Okay. So after this, what else? Let's discuss about the typical pneumonia. Okay. Typical pneumonia. Sir, how many types of typical pneumonia are there, sir? Okay. How many types of typical pneumonia are there? first the two types are low bar okay first type is low bar pneumonia and the second type is bronco pneumonia okay 
लोबार निमोनिया एंड ब्रांको निमोनिया ओके लोबार निमोनिया एंड ब्रांको निमोनिया सो व्हाट इज लोबार निमोनिया सर व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज लोबार निमोनिया सी लोबार निमोनिया फॉर एग्जांपल इमेजिन दिस इज द लंग ओके दिस इज द लंग एंड इट्स हैविंग टू लोब्स ओके इट्स हैविंग टू लोब्स लाइक दिस नाउ वन एंटायर लोब इज अफेक्टेड ओके वन एंटायर लोब इज अफेक्टेड सी वन एंटायर लोब इज गेटिंग अफेक्टेड यूजुअली सी लोबार निमोनिया इज अ टाइप ऑफ टिपिकल निमोनिया Okay, the one entire lobe, if it is affected, then it is called as a lobar pneumonia. Let me show you the images. Uh, here, they go. Now, here, see this one entire lobe is affected. So this is lobar pneumonia. Then what is bronco pneumonia, sir? In bronco pneumonia, they go. So how? It is a patchy involvement. It's not one single lobe. See, there is a patchy involvement. Infection, 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 infection. So this is patchy involvement. So patchy involvement is going to be there. Mainly base is going to be affected. It's going to be seen in extremes. Okay, let me write here. The so lobar pneumonia. Okay, bronco pneumonia is patchy involvement. Patchy involvement. Patchy involvement. Okay, uh, who is going to be affected? Either children or adults. Okay, old age. I shouldn't say adults. Old age. Okay, children. Old age. Which, which lobe of the lung is going to be most commonly affected? It's the base of the lungs. So base. Base most commonly going to be affected. So now let me show you one image. You just look at it and tell me what kind of pneumonia sir, it is. Okay, it's what kind of pneumonia? Is it a typical pneumonia or is it atypical pneumonia? It is atypical pneumonia. Why? Because see the exudates, the green color thing, exudates. Okay. See the green color, this thing is there outside the alveolus, outside the alveolus. So this is atypical pneumonia because of the mycoplasma atypical pneumonia so typical pneumonia is of how many types lobar pneumonia and bronco pneumonia in lobar pneumonia one lobe is going to be affected so image based questions are important now look here see they go lobe gone okay consolidated white color so lobar pneumonia sir lobar pneumonia here also what you can see, see this lobe affected lobar pneumonia what is this? Bronco. Okay, bronco pneumonia, sir. Okay. See, it's a patchy involvement. Patchy, patchy involvement. Bronco pneumonia. Okay, how to differentiate between lobar and bronco? You can easily and like you know differentiate whether it's a lobar or bronco. But remember both lobar pneumonia and bronco pneumonia, both are examples of both are examples of atypical pneumonia. After this, direct single error questions. Okay, single error questions. Now Most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. Usually, we are living in a community. What's the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia? I have explained to you. If it is typical, then the answer is streptococcus pneumonia. If it is atypical, if it is atypical, then the answer is mycoplasma pneumonia. Done. Now, what else? Then, what's the most common cause of hospital acquired pneumonia in the hospital environment? There is a high chance that you can get the pneumonia Why? because hospital environment contagious environment. Okay, in a hospital setting, what is the most common cause of pneumonia? Staph aureus. Okay, Staph aureus. See, hospital setting are nosocomial, one and the same. So, most common cause of nosocomial pneumonia. Again, it is Staph aureus. The patient who is on ventilators. Okay, so the most common cause of ventilator acquired pneumonia. The patients who are on ventilators. Okay, so these patients are going to get pneumonia with pseudomonas. Okay, pseudomonas, pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, pseudomonas, you know, right? It produces different, different colors in microbiology, it will come. Okay, pseudomonas, um, it, is, uh, going to it is going to cause infection in burn wounds. Okay, if, if the patient is having burns, burns, now these burn wounds will be affected, uh, affected especially with the pseudomonas. Green color, pus will form. Okay, pseudomonas. So, so ventilator acquired pneumonia, pseudomonas. What is the cause of pneumonia in burns patient? Pseudomonas, same thing. Okay. Pneumonia associated with the air conditioners. Okay, this air conditioner, centralized ACs, in the centralized AC plants, this bacteria will grow. So this bacteria is called nothing but Legionella. So Legionella can cause pneumonia. Okay, Legionella bacteria. So this Legionella, where it will grow? It will grow in cold environment, in the ventilators. Sorry, not ventilators, air conditioners. Okay, air conditioners. Ventilator associated pneumonia is pseudomonas. pseudomonas. Okay. Next, what else? What are the stages in pneumonia? Okay, 
how many stages are there in the pneumonia? A very important question, especially for the uh, uh, exams. Okay. The stages of the pneumonia, look here. The staging is called as Lennox staging. Okay, Lennox staging for the lobar pneumonia. Now, how many stages are there? This is the normal lung. Okay. First, what happens? First, in the initial stage, you are going to have congestion. Congestion. First stage is called as a congestion. What they will ask in your exam is just order. Order. Arrange in order. Arrange in order. Congestion. Okay. So, fluid is getting accumulated over there. Now, next phase is called as red hepatization. Red hepatization. Now, the lung is going to look like a liver. So, hepatization. Red hepatization. Okay. Now, next gray hepatization. Now, the immune system is good. So, now what happens is the immune system is going to do something so that from red hepatization, you are going to gray hepatization. Finally, resolution becoming normal. In your exam, what they will ask is what is the sequence? Congestion, red hepatization, gray hepatization and resolution. These are the sequence of events that happens in pneumonia, in lobar pneumonia. Okay, sir, what is this congestion? What is this red hepatization? Red hepatization means see into the alveolus, the RBCs are leaking. Even the RBCs are coming into the alveolus, sir. That's why red hepatization. Okay, next what is gray hepatization, sir? Yes, alveolus are there. Okay, and they are getting destroyed. And not only that, okay, it is a fibrinous exudate. The RBCs are getting simply first red color, red hepatization. Later on, the RBCs are going to be gradually getting destroyed with the help of macrophages, like you know, getting destroyed over there okay that will cause gray hepatization after that the macrophages will come and try to remove everything like you know clear the debris so that is resolution resolution so during resolution phase who are there macrophages are there okay. so again and again i'm telling you what they will ask me is order congestion red hepatization gray hepatization and resolution In resolution phase may macrophages red hepatization phase may rbcs are going to be dominant okay rbcs are going to be there okay next Stages of pneumonia are also completed. So, after this, what else I should teach you? Look, pneumonia in alcoholics. Okay, alcoholic patients will develop the pneumonia because the alcoholic patients will be like you know having vomitings, aspirations. They are also immunocompromised. So, in alcoholics, what is the cause of pneumonia? Most common cause of pneumonia? Klebsiella. Okay, Klebsiella. Klebsiella pneumonia. There is a bacteria. Klebsiella pneumonia. See, if a patient is having infection. Pneumonia with this Klebsiella pneumonia, when he, see Klebsiella is a bacteria, it's going to cause typical pneumonia, typical pneumonia. When this person is coughing, yes, productive cough is going to come. When the person is coughing, the sputum is going to look like red currant jelly. Okay, red currant jelly. Okay, these are the red currants. Okay, these are the red currants. Now, when you make jelly out of them, so that is called as the red currant jelly. Okay, red currant jelly. Now, so the sputum is going to look like a red currant jelly. Okay, if a patient is suffering with Klebsiella pneumonia, he is going to have a sputum that is going to look like a red currant jelly. Okay, these are some important points which I want you to know. So, with this, pneumonia important points. What are the pneumonia important points? Image based question. First, uh, no, red currant jelly, sputum. Red currant jelly sputum is seen in Klebsiella pneumonia. Stages of pneumonia. Congestion, red hepatization, gray hepatization and resolution. Okay, next. Different causes of pneumonia. Most common cause of pneumonia is streptococcus pneumonia. Most common cause of atypical pneumonia is mycoplasma. Most common cause of pneumonia in ventilator, ventilator associated patients is pseudomonas. Most common cause of uh, like pneumonia in a patient who is in hospital environment, staph aureus, the pneumonia which is associated with the air conditioners, Legionella, Legionella. Okay, different types of pneumonia. Image based questions. Okay, lobar pneumonia. This is lobar pneumonia. One lobe is specifically getting affected, lobar pneumonia. And these other two things are bronco pneumonia, patchy involvement. Bases are going to be mainly, mainly bases are affected, but any lobe can be affected. Mainly bases are affected, usually seen in children as well as adults. But lobar is most common. Okay, so this is also lobar pneumonia. One lobe is affected. Okay, so next, dry cough is seen in atypical pneumonia. Productive cough is going to be seen in typical pneumonia. Intra-alveolar exudates, typical pneumonia. Extra-alveolar exudates, atypical pneumonia. So with this, pneumonia topic is also completed. All the miscellaneous topics, whatever I want to, like you know, whatever left over that I discussed here. Now, never ever forget this image-based question. What is this image-based question? It is hyalinous membrane is there. There is hyalinous membrane. Okay, pink color hyaline thing is there. So what is this? Acute respiratory distress syndrome. Because of something, there is a diffuse alveolar damage. Leaking of fibrin into the alveoli. So, deposition of the fibrin leading to hyaline membrane disease. Even though you give oxygen, 
the still the patient is going to have persistent hypoxia because this hyaline membranes prevents the exchange of gases prevents the exchange of gases okay so this is going to be like intra like the fluid is getting accumulated in the alveolus that is going to cause the washing of the surfactant that's going to lead to collapse of the alveoli okay not related to heart problem heart is absolutely all right so with this the topic is completed so we have completed the lung pathology in three sessions now from tomorrow we'll be dealing with the new chapter hope the video is helpful thank you